All right, Darren <laughs> Jordan is joining us with Natalie Meyer, and and I've known Natalie for what two years now, just over. I think it's actually, yeah, is it two, two or three? Years. Almost three, actually. I think it's almost three. Yeah, in we March met, it'll be three. We met on Jasper Avenue at a party where you had your dance group. Yes. We ran into each other. You discovered I was an artist. I discovered you're not only not only an artist, but you're a dancer. So we hit it off right away, and we linked up for a few shows since, and we've shared our art interests many, many times, and I'm so glad you're able to join us. I know so this happy is not to be here. Thank you. I know this is not your your comfort it's zone. It's not my comfort zone at all. <laughs> you look we'll make it. We'll make it your comfort zone. It was because of that stuff. <laughs> That's you okay. Should Stop throwing mm, them under the bus. Get a shot of that. <laughs> and, Dar and Darren Jordan, who I'm meeting for the first time. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, very good, sir. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. An honor. Sure. Um, you, uh, you, you've, you've been uh, spoken of very highly by Natalie before you got here. Good people. You're right. God bless you, my friend. <laughs> and I love you a little bit. <laughs> oh, I got. <laughs> Look at him. I got the feels He's too. If he wasn't so dark, I could see the red. <laughs> Look close. It's mauve. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are here. Today's topic, um, I don't think you want to call it a topic. You're free to talk about whatever you want. But we're all artists mm -hmm. in our own right. And you do some great things in the city to, to drive um, art uh, here and, and, and g give the city a, a little more color. And Natalie does the same. And, and I used to do that. And what so happened? do you. It's been a while. Oh, you got a new platform. Let's get into it. It's different still platform. art. We're still being creative. Different just medium, a little different. Brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're here to talk about uh, art and, and basically everything to do with art. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of stuff that we're going to want to share. But uh, we'll start off with, uh, say, how you started in art, Natalie. We'll start off Can with I you. Can I say one Ladies thing really first. quick? Is sure. this like the actual pose of being on a podcast, this I don't like it because I end up pointing do and I don't like thing. pointing at people. So I try to do this. <laughs> okay, let's all that. point. You know what it is? You know what it is? I need seats with, with uh, armrests Arm rest. so I can Arm like rest. sit back yes, and actually. bring down the mic. But, that would be lazy boys. Right. You know? So for now, you're just going to have to make the proper adjustments okay. to get used to it. Okay. I'm just going to not do what you guys do. because. <laughs> so how did you start in art? So um, I've been doing art since I was little, since I was a child. Um, my father is actually also an artist. Um, he and I and my sister, so my sister's three years older than me. We used to go to this lady's house in Sherwood Park where I was raised. Um, and she ran an art studio in her basement. It was all oil painting. Um, it was not really a structured class. It was more of a free time studio just for people to come and paint. And she would uh, mentor you if if you needed. Um, so I just had a lot of free range with painting at that point. But it was strictly oils. It was back in the day when turpentine was what we used to clean brushes. Oh, that like, have, when turpentine like, was cool. <laughs> that must have When it would wonderful. burn all the nose oh, hairs. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, you were mentored by her? A little bit, more so by my father. Okay. Um, I kind of just had the creative freedom to do whatever I wanted there. So Beautiful. she would give us some projects and whatnot. If if you wanted to do them, you could. And if not, it was just a paint a place for you to paint. Um, I would say on average, I think it was Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. um, there would be anywhere from 10 to 20 people there. It was really, really a dope spot. Um, and until I was an adult, I didn't really realize how great that was because we don't have that now. How old were you at the time? I was in junior high. So maybe like... 17? No. 17 15. in junior high? I was slow. <laughs> 50? 50? I don't know Honestly, why I was thinking probably about probably like 10, 11. Okay. Yeah, about 10, 11. 11. You're 17? That's young. You I'm 17, 17 right you, now. You were 17? <laughs> no, no, I was 17 at the time. Oh, that, that's okay. very young to be getting into oil <laughs> painting. Like you did, it you was, skipped, you skipped yeah. sketching, drawing charcoal wow. and went right I into just, the hard stuff. Yeah. Well, of course, before that, I used to do those coloring contests. That yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I won a couple of things. Okay. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Was there a time you ever gave up? art and got back yes. into it like I did? Yes. Like so you put it aside? And after I went to high school, I went to Grant McEwen um, mm. back when it was called Grant McEwen College. Back in the day, uh, old school times. I and was there. Yeah. yeah. So I took computer graphics. Um, wasn't exactly what I wanted. I'm more into like the fine arts. I like to do everything by hand. Um, at the time, it was changing over to more of a digital structure, which I took 
but I didn't love it. I actually am not a digital artist at all. Mm. So I worked in the field for about four years, didn't love it. And then life kind of just took over. I lost sort of my art mojo, if you will. Yeah. Um, and I put it away for a lot of years. We'll I would say almost just under 20 years. Yeah. I just stopped Sounds doing familiar. art. Wow. And then, yeah, about four years ago, um, I kind of fell into a little bit of a depression. Um, actually, I shouldn't say a little bit. It was pretty bad, actually. So mm -hmm. I was trying to find some things to sort of resurface the self-love and love for life. And um, finally took a trip to the mountains with my sister and my daughter. Um, it was the first time I've been to the mountains in almost 20 years. How is your daughter, by the way? She's good. She's yeah. sweet 16 now. Get her yeah. to be an artist one day. Though. She is an artist. Oh, so, there you go. She is. She's an illustrator, actually. She doesn't paint. Yeah. Um, she wants to learn how to paint, though, but she's okay. definitely an illustrator. So, so you went through this tough on. time, went out to the mountains, yep. brought your daughter went and, and your sister. Went and sat down at the Pyramid Lake Resort, sat yeah. on the docks, started sketching, and it was just Bang. the rekindle. So since then, I have had great support, and people have just really pushed me and encouraged me, and it just started... And therapy at its finest therapy at its finest mm -hmm. so very similar story to mine darren i remember hey how you feeling sir i'm groovy mr jordan here. how did you start in all this uh, art endeavor mine was not nearly as romantic as that <laughs> that didn't sound awesome. romantic that, that was depressing awesome. no that ends well <laughs> it ends well that ends that's well. a beautiful great story man i'd buy yeah. that book yeah um no so mine my path was uh probably a lot simpler i it, in school i always enjoyed art um the arts i mean so it was if yeah. it wasn't theater it was uh the visual arts and um i found that uh, in grade 12 and uh, grade 11 they were you know i was doing these projects and getting some really positive uh, feedback from uh, my my instructors um and it was just something i just really enjoyed is an, another voice another means of expressing myself um but then yeah i kind of put that down for a bit and it was mainly the sketching, drawing, some some paints. I didn't. I did not have a lot of experience uh, with paints That's until cool. I Grant McEwen. Mm -hmm. God bless Grant. McEwen. Is that McEwen. where you guys God met? By them. the way, no, no. We we, we are. Really this met. is a new relationship right here. Is it? Within the last couple of years, we after, met through just after I met friends. you. I think it was an okay. yeah. It was in August at K Riz's uh, release right. party. That's Yep. And uh, what a wonderful moment because it was very comfortable. It we was were very easy to be. She around. does that to you, doesn't she? Yeah, man. Like she got me. I, the we're same talking. Way. I'm like. And I feel like we've been <laughs> we've known each other. Or we, yeah. But no, no. But anyway, I digress. Just the connection. Yeah, it was a really positive connection. And Meant it hasn't be. broken since. So That's right. But at any rate, so afterwards, I ended up going to, I went to Grand McEwen. I took uh, the Child and Youth Care Counselor Program. And towards the end of that, um, I don't know what it was. There was something that just rekindled my, uh, my, my passion for art. And um, I started picking up acrylics. And so I'd never really... Uh, used them before but I like the idea that you have a finite amount of time to work with this right mm -hmm. whereas with oils you've got it'll you can it's clean, not immediate clean, right clean. an acrylic will dry depending on the paint it'll dry with, in, within a relatively short period of time there's no messing around and so I like that challenge because by nature I kind of procrastinate a little bit <laughs> and so it guilty as like, charged amen yeah about? it seemed like a pretty good fit and uh, I had a lot of fun with it I was doing a lot of painting and then I had the opportunity to get some work up in um, at the time it was just like um, uh, what do you call them like rest restaurants and and, and cafes and yeah. a couple of um, hair salons mm -hmm. I don't know as a kid I thought it was a pretty big deal yeah and, it was a uh, big deal I guess I don't know but I really enjoyed that uh, but at some point I kind of realized that well I wonder if there are any other black artists in the city like I, I never used to see any black artists or uh any type of any type of exhibits, right? Even during Black History Month, I never saw that. Something dedicated to that, a yeah. little more. Yeah, I just wanted to know where were people of out course. there, and of that was. You're a cultured man. Uh, I'm just a guy <laughs> trying to get by, man. But I'll tell you, art was important to me at the time, yeah. and I wanted to know if there was anybody in my community that was doing that. Yeah. And so that was, you know, that was sort of the impetus for this whole Five Artists One Love. Um, Tell us about that endeavor because I've heard of the event before okay. through Natalie and through others. So I'm sorry, but you're not the first one to tell me. Oh, but, that's uh, good. That's right. It, it is good. It's working. <laughs> that is but, really but good. Tell us about that because I, I feel like we don't know if this is an annual thing. We don't know. Uh, 
myself as an artist, how would I get involved in something like that? Sure. Other artists out there that are listening to you, yeah. how would you know? How, how would they participate, Fantastic. or even just get tickets to enjoy the show? Yeah. Uh, what what do you? What is that? What is Five Artists One Love? Uh, well, uh, as I said prior, I was trying to f determine whether or not there were other people in our community that were doing work, right? That were that were producing art. Mm -hmm. And uh, who were these people? What what was I? I hadn't seen anything, so I, I didn't know. So um, I used to gripe and complain for years about there not being our, uh, black art shows during Black History Month. And I actually part partnered up with this gentleman, um, uh, Alex Patterson, who ran a gallery on 124th called the Two Gallery. The Two Gallery is now where Duchess is. The guy yeah. owns a building, mm -hmm. but yeah. it used to be this very unique gallery where he had. Uh, visual arts, but he had a lot of artisans doing one-off furniture. So you'd go in and you get this coffee table carved out of a tree or something, mm -hmm. uh, but it would be the only one, right? And so it was really quite unique. And he um, he was put into, uh, we were put in the same room and we had some of the same goals. And so uh, he gave me he gave me the latitude to put together this show. And so I thought, okay, five artists, we'll get five, we'll, we'll put a shout out a call for submissions for five local black artists, right? Mm -hmm. They had to be of African descent. They had to be local five. Okay. And uh, we got them. And uh, that was 13 years ago. And, and that's so when the name first... Five Artists, One Love. That's when it first wasn't started. Wasn't called anything else. You didn't it have was a Five thing. Artists, One Beautiful. Love, right out the gate. Yeah. And again, the idea was to... I like it. It's very catchy. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, yeah. yeah. To, to bring in uh, any, any uh, people in the community that were doing work and give them an opportunity not only just to show their work, uh, but I wanted us to learn how to navigate um, working with galleries, right? Nobody, I, I always felt that it was a somewhat insular type of uh, Very much so. realm. I, I, you know, I never felt like I was part of a community. Not to say that there's not an arts community. No, I know but exactly what you mean. I, I felt fairly isolated. Mm -hmm. um, and so this kind of opened it up. I wanted these people to learn how to work with galleries right how to promote your work how do you price your work and uh but more importantly i wanted us to have this connection like a network and so uh every year since since uh, is that 2006 or something i don't know but we so this is annual every year we do this thing for 13 years yeah wow. and so uh it started off the genesis was it was an art show i think in our in our fifth year the uh the director of the AGA got a hold of it. He heard about the show and he came to the actual um, he came to the actual show at the two gallery. His name was Gilles Hibbert and he was new to Edmonton and he came into this room and he looked around and if you go, it's like a party at the UN. You get every culture, every background. Um, it's it's kind of cool. It's a really good vibe. And this guy was coming in and he's like, where did all these people come from? Um, because he was saying that at the AGA, it was a very specific clientele, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, he said it was very, uh, very Anglo, very, you know, an older de demographic. And um, he wanted to change that up. So he actually invited us to the AGA to bring the show there, which was a huge deal. I, I was hoping to get there like 10 years down the road or something. But he opened the doors. He, he, he greased the wheels so that we could actually... Um, do some really interesting things there, and uh, it t it completely changed the game. It moved it to another level. So, the wow. the show has just grown from there. It's uh, the main show is always at the AGA, but we also do uh, some satellite shows as well, uh, some satellite uh, galleries. So, uh, University of Augustana, we were at Latitude for one year, a couple years, and this year again we'll also be at Scott Gallery. So, um, yeah, it's it's grown, and it has a, a music component now. Of course, uh, when we moved to the uh, when we moved to the AGA, uh, things changed because it used to be a very grassroots, community-driven event. So if you walked in, very professional, uh, catered, but we did the catering, and all our community hookups would come to fruition. So I had a wine rep. You came in, you got free wine, you got free food. Every twenty minutes was free uh, entertainment, music, or spoken word. And that was the formula. That was a format that we used for for years. But and that was we, part of the, that's part of the entry. Yeah. So when we, okay. but when by the time we got to the AGA, things changed. Now it's costing money. Of course. So then we had to. Uh, I basically developed the music show to bankroll the art show, and it took on a life of its own. And since mm -hmm. then, it's every year. There's the there's the art show, which is 
really a lot of fun and, and really uh, well received. But the music show is is a whole separate growing entity where yeah. we have an opportunity to highlight different musicians yeah. and spoken word artists and hip hop artists uh, in the community as well. So, congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. So, so it wasn't easy off the right off the start. You had to put in your five years before anything really arose as far as AGA or, yeah. or you know bigger events or yeah we were very fortunate because as I said I had you know I had I had had my eyes set on a larger more established gallery going down the road but I didn't expect that we'd be in the AGA in five years it was well, just happened 10 past. years but five years still a substantial amount of time to put into art oh yeah yeah you know what I mean yeah, like uh, it is. like uh, don't sell yourself short either like yeah, 10 years thanks, okay man, yeah. that's being pretty humble but Five yeah. years, that's a fair amount of work, man. Yeah. We're, like for I, you to get noticed after that, that's... Oh, and yeah, we haven't looked back. I'm, I'm very happy. I would say in uh, for February, which is Black History Month, the shortest and coldest month of the year, I might add, <laughs> uh, we... Um, so this happens in February. Yes. Well, yeah, it does happen. It's in February, uh, okay. but I've, I, I want to, I've been working very diligently to expand uh, that. I don't want to be tethered to a particular month. Yeah. Uh, so we've we've had a couple opportunities. One now every uh, September we have a show uh, for Culture Days. So it's an art show. It's again, there's music. It's all kind of thing. And it's free. Mm-hmm. And um, the idea behind that is a, it's a thank you to the people that have been part of it from for however long. Um, as a thank you to the community that's come to support us. And again, you come in. It's free food. Free ninety nine. Free food. <laughs> free ninety nine. I'm I telling like you, that. free food free music free poetry and free entertainment and just there's this vibe when you walk into the room yeah. as an artist yeah. i i hear i get a lot of feedback that people are inspired they feel oh i want to go and paint now of course you everywhere know, you turn go, there's art listen. whether it's music or something on the walls it's oh just, yeah you're inspired and it was all ages too so yeah oh, seeing yeah, yeah. some of those young kids in there mm-hmm. we're mm-hmm. talking about that oh kid from africa that God. just blows me every from from away. edmonton no, this kid in Africa I keep seeing on the internet. Oh, the and, little kid, and he's and he's painting um, hyperrealism. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, I the saw photos. That. They look like photos. <laughs> yeah. Blow me away. Yeah. Blows me away every time I see that kid. Yeah. So right. anyway, so, no. but uh, so that's still going strong. You're still doing it annually. Doing this it annually. February coming up, I'm assuming there's one. February second will be at the AGA, and the um, the music production um, is going to be at the. Uh, uh, Triffle Theater for uh, from Grant McEwen. Mm-hmm. So we were uh, we were there last year. We had a great time. It was incredible. It was thanks. It was so much fun, and yeah. uh, they were really, uh, really receptive to what we were doing. And um, yeah, it sells out every year. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, we're. You're not going to tell us what the theme is this year yet, are you? Uh, not for the show. <laughs> I knew uh, it. No, and if you if you were to if you were ent- if you were to um, throw your name into the hat and put in your submission uh, as one of the five artists. Yeah. You're not tethered by any theme, you know, just because it's Black History Month and you're, you know, uh, you know, of African descent. You don't have to paint Afrocentric themes. That's that's never been what it's about. You're if giving you, them creative freedom. You, absolutely. Uh, if you paint flowers, you paint flowers. It's all good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there is a component to the show that is actually got a theme, and that is for everybody else so i'm i'm promoting and and we're doing a show with these five artists but anybody can be part of this show it's it's very inclusive it's called the wall and the wall is a topic that i put out there usually on social media this is the topic it's usually controversial and usually it usually makes for a very interesting show that's uh, right you, it makes for that's some what very, controversy is for right that's it right. makes for some very um good dialogue and uh that is the only thing that um, that's the only part of the show where it is themed and if you want to throw your hat into the ring the two things are you have to adhere to the theme and it has to be presented on a 12 by 12 gallery ready so canvas. your canvases have to be the, the they're same. all uniform or you're definitely an artist yeah I, I'm a little OCD. that way that's, that's right. how I would I said it that's and trying right. to find those two inch galleries size. is almost yeah. impossible oh, the gallery grade the oh, yeah, double it's gallery gotta, yeah, it's, it's gotta be it's gotta yeah. be so uh, I'm sorry because it all looks in, in uniform it's uniform it's like, yeah. it's, there's a symmetry it's clean and I have a good sense of well-being when I look at it when it's done yeah but it's uh, it's good. So the I don't know themes if you notice, vary. But his eyes light up because this one over here is a perfectionist. Oh yeah. Well, no, I'm uh, I'm just in and agreement with yes. what you said. <laughs> but I see <laughs> your eyes light up. I see where it comes from. Yeah, Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you have to so. be a little uh, a little bit of a perfectionist, even though 
some people might be annoyed but if you're if your <laughs> yeah, final vision annoyed. is let being be achieved in here yeah exactly that's that's good for fine. you that's fine. and do you have any other events besides five artists one love do, uh, i know that you do uh, are you involved in any art battles darren or is that so we we did an art battle in uh in september it was the yeah. first time for again for culture days right so yeah. traditionally what happens is um it's a retrospective we usually show a number of people uh, that have been in the show before alumni they bring some of their they'll bring their pieces in and um again this entertainment and, and music and food and we will have on display uh some of the pieces from previous shows right okay uh and it's cool because people will come from even though they're out of town they'll send stuff so it's always there's always something that represents what we've done in past yeah. this year i wanted to do something different so i did an art battle but as you know we put our five artists one love spin on it all right so it had two uh sections the first one i chose four artists who i knew were extremely talented and and very um unique in their in their style yeah. right present company included right so natalie was one of them and for, for those of you who haven't reason. seen natalie's oh, work dope it yeah. is it is not only dope but what, what i love about your work especially and i think i've told you this before is it's very consistent yes looking at one of your paintings i would always know who it is who painted it absolutely people say that about my art but i feel like they're just saying that because they found out it was me that painted it because i'm all over <laughs> oh, the place you have Where that style you, as but well. you're very you're very unique yeah. and you have and i've never looked at a painting and questioned whether it was you yeah that Aww. consistency that you have that most artists wish they had mm -hmm. but in my mind i'm too all over the place i would never be consistent enough yeah but i always appreciate That's that about you really sweet oh, what's yeah. your instagram um, uh, my Instagram is Inda by Natalie. So I N D A H by, and then my name, N A T A L I E. For those that are listening, that way they can check out your art. Oh, maybe while we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> so go on. So you had, you had artists, obviously as talented as four, Natalie. Four artists, um, they're somehow connected to the show, uh, uh, in some capacity or other. Mm -hmm. And, um, so your typical art battle is you've got X amount of time, finish a canvas. Uh, what we did here, we gave him a 16 by 12, I think it was. Um, I don't remember what the it size of the canvas somewhere was. Somewhere around that, yeah. Somewhere, it was a small canvas. And uh, they had 20 minutes to complete the, a painting. I've and, been to one of those. Yeah, so this is one. Is it the one though, where everybody walks around? The yeah, so we had like four. It's yeah. cool. It's like a yeah. tornado yeah. around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was Some perfect. of them were awesome. Some oh, of them was, was like, bro, you better speed it up. Oh, no, it was good. Well, that was half the fun was um, was the audience, right? Uh, because from the beginning... It was like musical canvases. Everybody was just walking oh, around. Got the yeah. crowd phones went crazy. Out. Yeah, yes. the phones are out. There's music playing in the background. There's there's this energy. And then you uh, got the idiot that's walking the other way. It's like, don't you see all <laughs> in uniform, walking clockwise? My, you got to do it the no, other no. way. My yeah. people will reel against that. Uh, I'll, be honest, that yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, that yeah. was me because I forgot where I left my drinks. So I had to backtrack. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so no, no, I'm, I'm the guy I'm talking about. Oh, that's awesome. So we had them five minutes, uh, sorry, 20 minutes. Um, and the theme was black girl magic. Boom. Do whatever you want with that. That was the theme. And so they just... They did their thing, and it was amazing. The next one was a little bit more challenging because it was a much larger canvas, mm -hmm. and they it had was a, gigantic. It actually. was pretty a big. lot larger than I thought big. it was going to be. Yeah, and they had twenty minutes, and uh, an hour for the second. Sorry, one. my I'm, my apologies. They had an hour, and they were. Uh, but again, they weren't. This time, they weren't tethered by any theme, but they had to choose from the box of foolishness. And a box of foolishness was a box with random items in there. So Tools, brushes. Uh, Yoshi from Mario Kart. Um, <laughs> a there was pipe. Like a, a, what was oh, that man, pipe throw, thing? Throw there was a, some CV pipe or something. There was, uh, there <laughs> a was a pee trap. That's what it was called, a pee trap. Tra there we, if look you're at a plumber. you, you yeah. plumber, you. Uh, there was uh, like a fur scarf. Anyway, just random stuff. There was stuff. a disco ball. Yeah, disco ball. Uh, they had to choose, and then they had to leave this, the stage and Get to work. It's kind of cool because the audience opened up like the Red Sea yeah. and it just psh, went straight to their work. And it, I again, would definitely it sneak crazy. in my own tools. Like I found some <laughs> the forty dollar brushes, <laughs> horse hairs. Oh no, you oh, can no. use your own brushes. No, no, they, they bought their brushes. They bought their they bought their. But you got to use one or two of the tools. Is that what well, you had to do? Was take something from that box and it had to be incorporated into the painting somehow. Oh, right? okay, gotcha. So. So you don't so have a example, theme, but you want it to work whatever you picked whatever out. Whatever it is. So you pick out doing. Yoshi. Interesting. Good luck. Put him in. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And it, it turned out quite well. I had, I um, was it was surprised. a rubber ball that had a bunch of tentacles on you it. You chose the rubber ball. I mm -hmm. chose the rubber ball. With tentacles, that's different. Be, it had tentacles. Being, so yeah. I knew 
that I was going to end up just probably dipping it or making some type of texture, yeah, right? Of course, mm -hmm. Natalie. So, I mean... The art walk, and, and then it was really cool because at the very end, as I was dabbing it all over the painting, yeah. it lit up. So it was kind of... Oh, like, it's fantastic. Little, Don't like, you love when things cool, just work all by accident? Yeah. <laughs> my yeah, biggest yeah. mistakes led to my best painting. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I I've almost been high forgot making to use some it. mistakes, man. <laughs> almost. But, uh, they worked out. Oh man, uh, the work, that is cool. The work was awesome. I, I definitely want to go to your next battle for oh, sure. I'd thanks. love to be a part of it. I was telling Natalie I'd love to join something like I, that because really I've always been to told to, and she sure. always asks me to 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 get into stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I definitely want to in the future one day soon uh, join that. That sounds like fun. Oh yeah, and it's uh, the the feedback from the artists was real. I mean, the audience were they were lit. But the they feedback were. from the audience or from the uh, the artists was also really remarkable too because they all had this shared anxiety all of them yeah it's an experience and they right? were all they were all none of us had done yourself. it before none yeah. of these none of these guys are slouches they were you know yeah. they were very skilled they came to the table with a, a, a very you know solid skill set mm -hmm. however um they'd not been in a situation like that and uh so it was kind of cool to but see but if you're a true artist i feel uh, challenging yourself is such a big part of being an artist absolutely uh, i did a painting with that clear glue I just came up with an idea to paint oh, really? clear glue on a canvas where I can't see what I'm yeah. painting. I almost just memorized shapes where and where goes. everything goes. And then I hit it with glitter. And there was about 250 people in the crowd. And I was on stage. And it was nerve-wracking. Nerve -wracking, but Did that's it work? what made it that fun. That was his Did Frank Sinatra piece? That was piece? my Frank Sinatra one. But oh it, my it worked God, because Darren. it was such a... Um, it was uh -oh. such a test. His, I just his wanted wheels are to, grinding. Right? He's like, uh, who <laughs> is this on. Frank like, But No, uh, are you joking? Come on. My, no, point, my, my point is, I'm a big fan. So <laughs> I'm a big fan. I, music I chose, is my jam. You and understand? it was his music that I was painting oh, yeah? to. At the end. So at, at the, the end, end it was like a big reveal. So I wanted mm. to kind of leave the audience in suspense. And that was um, the, the best thing I could come up with. But back to challenging yourself, I feel like if you don't do that, if it becomes a lull, then you've lost that edge as an artist. I don't know That's how right. most artists feel, but if I'm not challenging myself, I should definitely walk away from it. Yeah. Like the day I stop trying to be innovative and, and push myself a little further, yeah. whether it's working with oils, acrylics, glitter, yeah. um, anything, the tools, you know what I mean? I feel like then you stop growing. Mm -hmm. I, specifically as an artist, maybe in other realms of life, you, you can get away with that. But if you're not challenging yourself, it, it's... I think it's, some it's, artists just get complacent. They just... They yeah. stick with the thing that makes the yeah, most comfortable, right? Has to drive mm -hmm. you the rest of the they mm -hmm. don't evolve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that, that's interesting. There's one of the gentlemen, uh, Braxton uh, Santiago. Oh, He's Braxton. Uh, this young, I've young heard of cat. Braxton. Young cat, uh, really very talented man. He said he's never done it before, um, and he did it. When he's done, he says, "I won't do it again." You know? Is that what he said? Yeah, he said. He said, but he made. He <laughs> said two years off my life. It's just too. It was too. Um, it's not what he does. Right, but the reason why he took the gig is because he wanted exactly what you He's said. Giving him a ball with tentacles, of he course. Want, it's not he what wanted. He, does. he wanted. He, what did he? No, he took a fur. He took a fur. Uh, he had a fur scarf. Yeah, you see. And I'm you, like, how is that going to work? It worked. You scarred him for life without worked, even knowing. No, it. but he do it, he did exactly what you said. He oh, pushed okay. himself. Yeah. It's not, it's well out of his We're comfort zone. We're afraid to do it. But yeah. once we he do it, we always it. find that's our I best work. I was terrified. Yeah. Of course, so, man. So for him, You're terrified be, of doing a podcast. I am terrified of doing a podcast. You're all natural now. Pro. Look, really? No, I'm right? not looking at anything. I'm just... Yeah. You should I, be and the I probably host. won't watch it because I, I don't like hearing my voice recorded. No, you have a great It's voice. a beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. So go on. So that's, that's you know, the art battle. That goes on how often? Once a year? Twice a year? That's the first time we'd ever done that. And we did it for, again, under for Culture Days, under the umbrella of Culture Days, which is the last day in in September. And so throughout the city, there are a variety of different communities that will put forth some sort of a an event. And I just so happened to be fortunately asked by the National Black Coalition of Alberta to... Of Canada, sorry, to um, to to put this on under, um, I guess under their umbrella. So this is, I think, about the sixth year that we've done this. We used to do it at the, um, we actually used to do it at City Hall, did it at City Hall, and then uh, the last couple of years we were at the AGA, which was pretty pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, uh, the last two years, we just we've got these new venues that were fantastic, and uh, just that London so Villas get, is where London we Villas, had. Oh, London Villas. Have you been there? No. You yeah. love that place. Yeah. Ninety six Street, hundred and hundred. Hold on. I, I, 
Hundred and ninth A Avenue. Hundred and ninth. You're right. So it's it's right. a historical I'm building. I'm like an elephant when it comes to addresses. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a it it used to be a church, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most recently, the I was there for the last event. I had my Kanye painting there. Oh yeah, that was um, it. That I had was like five of my paintings there, and you had that the one where you had people painted. That's, That's right. Where I had the my body, body art. Yeah. That was the first time I'd. See. I we'll didn't know. I, I didn't make that connection. I didn't make that connection that it was the same place until later. Um, but as you know, I mean, it's a beautiful venue. It's yes. an old church, uh, refurbished um, and completely gutted and, and redesigned. It's oh, it's I, really I, nice. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it's, it's, I a it nice, really nice uh, it's a nice, it's very unique. Very unique. Very unique. And yeah. even the exterior, it doesn't look like a church. It's an old historical building. Mm -hmm. and, but those uh, are the best ones where the exterior doesn't look that great. No. You walk you in, walk you're like, in. it's our little oh my secret. God. Yeah, that's right. I don't know how long that secret's going to be there, but <laughs> right now it's well, ours. People are talking about it now. I know, we're going to edit this part out. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> uh, it's actually the owners of the foundry room. I'm not sure if you know where the foundry room is. It's no, just behind Grant McEwen, mm -hmm. and it's also an event center. Uh, we used them for the first time last year, and it's, um, it's just uh, north of Grant McEwen, like right behind the gym. And it's a beautiful venue it too. Is. It's smaller. Uh, they use it for weddings and other small events, uh, but it's very industrial looking. Con they use it for art uh, shows as well. Concrete walls, concrete floor, R really a unique looking place. And uh, they've just recently acquired the uh, London Villas. And so we use that relationship uh, that we had formed last year to move forward and go to their new uh, new space. And it was just um, it was a, incredible. a real delight. Good and people all the to work with. connections you made. Yeah. You know. yeah community right but you know what it's kind of like restaurants like oh yeah like my oh, yeah. favorite restaurants are the ones that nobody's heard of the oh, ones yeah. that are yeah, hidden yeah. around the corner the ones that become mainstream but then they get mainstream when they're like then they get mainstream yeah, yeah they, exactly they get, you know exactly but it's but but that's the approach with that is if mm -hmm. it's if it's kind of unique to you and a, and a few others in a place where you've thrown these get-togethers and it's a dope place on the inside oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's cool man it gives you that um, that's right cozy feeling you know yeah indeed. i want to check that out though i haven't been to that place oh yeah great place for um for an art show and again they're really easy to work with and uh it's funny because i got um uh, i had the opportunity to uh to, to to do this culture days event last year again but the people that uh pay us they were a little late in, um, Aren't they always? Well, you know, they were a little late in getting, getting things organized. So they said, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, we're good to go. And I'm like, well, we have eight days, <laughs> eight days before the event. I'm not going to do it. I, I just, that was my thought. I don't want to do that because I can't risk having an event that's kind of, you know. Half. Yeah, I can't do that. And then my Feels wife. Feels like it's up in the air. And, and, yeah, yeah. And, and as a person, do it, that's a bit of a control freak. And it's like your yeah. reputation it's online, not, too. Yeah, right? it's your exactly. reputation, though, right? I mean, I think well, you should be Your friends and family are coming my to My friends the, and to family. And, or you know what? You might walk in for the first time. And yeah. I don't want you to walk in and go, oh, this is okay. Yeah. You know, first or impressions. Or first impressions. Uh, so I, I wasn't going to do it. And then my wife, uh, Rosemary Jordan, found this spot online. And we're like, oh, my God, that looks so cool. It's this industrial kind of cozy interesting room and so the idea is we'll do a pop-up right we're just going to do a pop-up lounge you know and that's yeah. and that's how it worked out it was this art show it was live mm -hmm. music and um that's where that relationship was established and uh so we're anytime they open in anything i'd be more than happy to help support these guys mm -hmm. so they were really they were really cool yeah well, i was being a, a, one of one of the people that's driving art forward in Edmonton. I appreciate all the work you're putting in. I can't Thank wait you, to check it. out some of these 100%. events and these shows because I've met a lot of people mm -hmm. through Natalie. I'm surprised I haven't, I probably have seen you or maybe run into you and I just don't you know remember, what? so Actually, forgive me. Actually, I but think I introduced you at the Eras event at the Rust Magic I Gallery. I feel like I've met him at some I was, point. I was there. Just what was kind your piece? of in passing. Yeah, like His you was just the big people. Tupac in the window. Oh, wow. It oh, I think really I might that, have seen you then. Oh, maybe. Uh, um, th for that party, I was just, I was you were in, in and, and out, out, but it was crowded yeah, yeah. and it was, it was fun. Really but just to have good. my painting there, yeah. I feel like I'm still at the party. Yeah, but people are good. still well, talking about there. that event. Well, when, I, when, when you leave and your art's mm -hmm. still there, you're like, I was there, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you saw Tupac in the window. Um, <laughs> Tupac was there. <laughs> but I, I appreciate all the work you're doing because I know I've been to some of your events. I met a lot of great people through Natalie. And of course, I think we ran into each other or were introduced and I don't remember. So for that, I'm sorry, but I can't wait to check out some of your some of your events coming up. Glad to have you. There, yeah, that'd be great. Appreciate that. I appreciate what you're doing. This is another vehicle for us to get the word out there about the, 
the work people are doing and the art that's in our city. Our city is awesome. Another form of expression. Absolutely. Having good conversations and recording them. Mm -hmm. I feel like I got everybody's undivided attention that way and they have mine. So it's it's always unique. (laughs) Your body art, because we we mentioned that. Mm -hmm. I know, I mean, we all know your paintings and for those people out there that have heard your Instagram being shouted out and they they checked it out, uh, (laughs) your art speaks for itself. I don't feel like you need to do anything else, but I've noticed... At the last, if I recall correctly, two events, that one downtown where you did some body art. I did. Why did you get into that? How did you get into that? And what's and what's uh, what's what's next for that? Is that because I so, see it? It looks it looks dope. Excellent. Yeah. But I don't know um, what got you into that. Is that something you've seen before? Is that a, a mainstream thing that I'm just not familiar it's with? N- it's not a mainstream thing. Um, I it's actually a Natalie follow. Thing. Well, mm-hmm. kind of. Like, I've always wanted to do different dimensions of art. So not only do I want to paint, I also want to do sculpture. I want to do murals. Mm-hmm. I want to do carving. Right. We just want to try everything. I actually started doing pyrography not too long ago. Um, you know, and I really need to master each of these things. But I want to just see sort of where I'm going to go with it. Back to challenging yourself, right? That's Without right. That be, uh, and agree. it's hard because I don't do it full time. So I can't really dedicate, you know, myself to sort of learning a particular part of you know body paint or yeah. acrylics or yeah. whatever mm-hmm. um so with the body paint i follow a very well renowned artist um, who's out of nigeria named laulu um, and he works mostly out of new york right now he's extremely famous mm-hmm. uh, for his body art and i've been following him for quite some time you probably know who he is no but i'll be looking you don't up. no so his um, his work is very similar to what I do. Um, so, so same concept, but same just concept. your own spin on it. Exactly. Gotcha. So his stuff mm. is actually based on um, Yoruba. You know the Yoruba tribe. Yes. Mm-hmm. So his is it does very look a bit tribal. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, he tells stories on people's bodies basically Mm -hmm. but he also paints and this was actually what makes me think of you omar is he also paints on jackets he paints on like jordan i've done that before that was interesting (laughs) yeah on uh, purses like for all the celebrities he's huge he's the one who actually painted um all the dancers for beyonce's lemonade video oh Hmm. okay if you kind of remember they all had like face paint and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. that's kind of when i started following him um and i was just so just mesmerized have by you what he did i have not you should mm-hmm. i think you'd love your, your i work. should actually i yeah. didn't even think of that yeah See, it's pretty it's simple just... now <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually i think he'd be, um, he'd be just as impressed by your work well you know it's still artist, developing like mm-hmm. at this point yeah. but uh like that's kind of where it stemmed from um however i am a closet junkie when it comes to watching skin wars i don't know if you've ever watched skin wars skin wars Mm -hmm. so it's a show i believe it's on tlc you know it it's all body paint and they they tell me what's up with uh, we need to talk (laughs) (laughs) what the kids are doing today yeah exactly so So skin wars it's like a reality show okay which i don't watch tv but i watch this because it's um I don't even know how many contestants, like 10 contestants or something like that from all over um, North America. And they just come in and they have models and they have all these different um, projects that they have to do. So they have like 20 minutes to paint this type of theme on yeah. a person, like a live model. Yeah. Because um, all your all your body artwork is done on models. On models. I noticed they're like, they're runway models. They look yeah. like runway models. Yeah. yeah. Is that how you get them hired or are they just local friends and um, people that you've run into? Or like, how does that work? The first one that I did, so... What if I want to do it? Well, you can. <laughs> I have to shave. <laughs> yes. Does it stick actually. to <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Go on. I had one one model, actually, Tato. He, you probably know yeah, Tato. Yeah, the dancer. Yeah. Yeah, so um, my models are mostly... The very first show that I did mm-hmm. was for Ethno Fashion Gala, which was in May. Um, and it was put on by a local African designer, Dan... I can't pronounce his last name. Um, Kikili. I probably totally botched that. However, he um, he and I have been in talks for about a year. He mm-hmm. wanted me to be part of his show as an art... Like, for the art in the lobby mm-hmm. the year before, but I was traveling... Um, and so this past year he approached me and says, we really need to, to do, to do something. And I was 
just kind of starting off my body painting line at that time. Um, funny story is I had never actually painted a body before and I committed oh, to doing wow. this show. How was that experience? It was a little nerve wracking. Oh, wow. Do you have to prep it like a canvas? Like, is there anything you put uh, on this? I didn't really before? know. I just was like, okay, well, let me just do a little bit of research. Okay. I bought my black and white body paint. I got my brushes. I got my alcohol. I had my idea, got mm -hmm. some props and away I went. And volunteers. I painted, painted for 10 hours. The so, bodies. So is the five paint, people? Is the paint you use? Is it just acrylic it's or is actual it body paint? Yeah. So what's the difference? Um, Why can't I paint acrylic on something? You probably could, but it would crack. Yeah, that's what it is. Off, right. Probably. That's what it is. So there's different types of body paint. Um, I mostly work with either Kryolan or um, Wolf brand. Mm -hmm. The Wolf brand, I really like them, but I. I don't know if they've been bought out or if they went under. They're really difficult to get the product. Okay. Mm. Um, the Kryolan stuff is amazing because it's very highly pigmented. Uh, mostly I just work on black and white paint, obviously because the style that I do. Mm -hmm. um, but actually something that I'm now evolving into right now is doing full body paint where it's realism as opposed to more oh. of the African style. See, I like that. That's yeah. Cool. So that's kind of what Skin Wars is about. It's like making them disappear into this like wall like making them look like the wall like you can't even see the I've person i've seen a few oh, photos online of it's artists that did that insane. and it's cooler than you think when you actually look into it yeah and, okay. yeah right like how many cool. people can you spot and you think maybe right? you can kind of see one but there's like seven of them or yeah. something right um it's, like being on dmt it mesmerizes mm -hmm. me to watch this kind of stuff and i just want to do it like so bad right mm -hmm. yeah so um my next step actually was since Halloween is right around the corner, yeah. I kind of put it out there on my Instagram for those people that want to do something cool for, I mean, there's lots of parties going on. There's actually, um, there's one for Dominica. I think there's, um, there's a couple Halloween theme parties, Halloween that, are... theme parties that are coming up. Um, and so I just went out and of course I had to buy like yeah, a whole of bunch of different colors and now I just want to experiment. So this entire week actually is going to be probably painting my daughter and a couple of my friends so I yeah. can just snap some shots. Mm. Um, You're going to be posting that? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So I follow a couple of people on Instagram that do some really, really cool stuff. Just like face, chest kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and you get inspired. Yeah. So um, the Kryolan stuff is great because it not only is it very highly pigmented, but it actually has its own ba antibacterial. Um, is it odorless? Yeah. It's odorless, yep. So you don't have a foul smell in your painting? Not at all. There's um, something called Liquiset that I use instead of water. And mm -hmm. what that does is it actually dries it onto the skin so that you can't wipe it off just by your hand. Oh, okay. And it, it's anti kind of I always smudge. thought about that because mm -hmm. you see some, uh, mm -hmm. some, some of your work that goes around. Yeah. I think, you know, how's it for the heat? Does it mm -hmm. rub off around the neck? Well, I mean, it's not on there permanently. And, yeah. and, you know, if you've got lots of sweat or body heat, eventually it is going to come off. Yeah. Um, but you should shower after a few days. Absolutely. <laughs> well, <laughs> depends yes, how long probably. <laughs> so for the show, it does cream, what it needs to do. There's cream paint and then there's powder paint. I always use the powder because the cream doesn't dry. So that's when you're going to smudge it on everything, right? So that's your favorite product to use. The, yeah, as the far Kryolan. as body paint. Absolutely. Goes. So I am going to be doing, you know, some Halloween stuff for those people that want something different, something yeah. cool. We're gluing gems on people. It's going to wow. be like super yeah. high fashion glam. Well, sometimes we can't skeletons. find the right costume in time, and you we know? don't know what wow. to do. So that's so a good alternative. There's the whole Dias de las Dias de los Muertos, mm. the Break Day of out the Dead, the Spanish. right? Yeah. So yeah. that's like a big thing. So mm -hmm. I mean. I awesome. love that kind of stuff. I so. am so proud of you, Natalie. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Ever since I met you, you've grown leaps and bounds, especially when it comes to art. Good for you. You should actually and come. And podcasting now. Let's. You're right. Add yeah. that to your resume. Co-host resume. <laughs> <laughs> we should actually, um, the body painting line that I did before yeah. was um, very African, Afrobeat based. Mm -hmm. So the very first one that I did, I actually hired a local uh, drummer. Um, from Senge Academy. He, it's Reki Lloyd and his wife, Irene. Very good. And uh, yeah. they are absolutely outstanding. They do mm -hmm. workshops for children in the city. They do lots of events all over the city. Do they charge children to do it? Um, for the workshops, they do. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what the rates are. Their rates are pretty affordable. They're, they're very What's, affordable. Uh, give me a ballpark. Like what's, what are parents looking at? I don't know, actually. I, I, I actually, they've been in our show. Uh, in past. And um, I, I work at the Royal Alexander Hospital in uh, Child Psych. That's and where I was so born. 
Hey, shout out to the back. Royal Alec. Come back home. Come We're back still home. there. We're still yeah. there. I, I got really far in life, about 20 blocks. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right? Boy, I've yeah. gone places. It's all right, man. Uh, but they uh, they actually came and did a drum circle for our patients. Um you know some uh, some younger uh, some younger patients and uh, they were also they charge less than a hundred dollars they're there for an hour and um, it was very therapeutic and um, the kids that were there just really enjoyed it and uh, you know they're very engaging they know? are so, amazing yeah you ever great. thought about um, and I bring this up because I thought about it about a year ago you ever thought about going to you know to a hospital and and just having a group of artists whether it's it's five artists one love um, going in there and and each artist picks um, picks one of the younger patients and together works on a portrait of them mm. where they can kind of sit down and discuss who their favorite superhero is maybe go to really, the studio really come cool. back concept. a week later with all the artists and and have them as superman spider-man but their face so it's got to be a oh, portrait wow. artist like natalie or myself mm-hmm. have you ever thought about that I, it crossed my mind i thought Talk about putting a smile on their face, you know? Yeah. I just thought it'd be really cool to, yeah. to try something like that. We, if you're I, ever down. Oh yeah, we've had totally I've had down. I've had artists in. Yeah. That's very specific. That's an interesting concept. I've had um, artists come in and um, for example in the summertime we actually run a uh, an arts program. Uh, one of our former patients who was a, she was a patient there when she was in seventeen, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, she's come back. She's in her twenties now, and she's been shown in different galleries. She took arts in in university, and has, um, you know, she's done quite well for herself in that respect. And so she's, she comes back every summer to put back, right? So, as as this young artist, she comes back, and she she grappled with bipolar. That was her. Um, oh wow. That was her diagnosis, and so she comes back, and she tells these kids, like, listen, you don't let you don't let your uh, disorder define you right uh, mental health is something that everybody deals with in their own way mm-hmm. and uh, art was uh, a vehicle for me to pull myself out of uh, you know some troubled times so yeah so bipolar but as an artist how did did that affect her work in either a positive way or a negative way? did you see it yourself like does that give you a, a different spin on your art that you know that that's almost detrimental to, to your future in art or did you feel like I, it was still a battle for her to get over that uh, uh, like you know you know when deal we, with it at the same time well you know a lot of the artists that we have all celebrated you yeah. know Van Gogh you know Basquiat a lot of these people do not all... ask Adelie who Natalie who her favorite <laughs> artist is oh because she doesn't have one oh it's okay yeah I think me and you maybe do, it's you obviously oh you there's a... some... actually we talked about <laughs> yeah, that yeah <laughs> Natalie's my favorite and hey, I'm her favorite there you go yeah. that works yeah. but there are a number of artists we know this a number yeah. of these artists have grappled with uh, mental health issues themselves no shit and so there's there's a fine line between that creative genius and uh and and one's mental health, <laughs> Lose, you know, and your mind. being on the edge, yeah, and, and some, you know, some have gone over and crossed back, uh, but their, you know, their uh, their their issues have sometimes been a, a catalyst for their work, right? Yeah, of course, sometimes mine uh, have been. Oh, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, been. they're in the the depths of despair. Of course, and the work that they they produce represents that, right? Expresses mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talk about bipolar. You're talking about two different opposites, yeah. and there are some yeah. people where they create uh, when they're in their their manic stage, and and it's and it's different. You know, it's different. It's uh, but again, that's it's why I was wondering about the the, the bipolar and oh, art. Yeah, yeah. If it if it brought out like a really cool spin, I I on don't her know her not story. To, not no. to not to take you know what she's dealing with yeah, and yeah. make it about art, but no, I no, just no. I always wondered, especially when you started talking about it, how that would affect uh, the work that comes out. Mm-hmm. The, the, is it noticeable? Yeah. Like, could she I tell this person? That yeah, that's you know, that's that's kind of what I had in mind. I, I yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. it, it I'm talking specifically about bipolar, and yeah. when I when I've spoken to our patients about that, they talk about when it when it's when they're low, yeah. the life looks different. Mm-hmm. The motivation to get out of bed sometimes, or just do things that you yeah. need to do, is uh, is is gone. Uh, but when they're on their manic swing, I hear these people, uh, the, these patients of ours, these wonderful young people, they can articulate it so well. They're like, food tastes better. Yeah. You know, things look better. Colors are brighter. You know, yeah. they'll, they'll be up all night doing whatever it is that they're going to be doing. Right. And we've um, had many of those nights. Oh, yeah. So on that upswing, it's, it's for some nights. of them, it's really, oh, you know, it's like an interesting. Owl. 
<laughs> and nocturnal. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But again, sometimes it gets out of control, and, and it's you know it's a different thing altogether, right? It's Natalie, have you ever dabbled in in like oil paint? When I was well, like yeah, you said when you were younger, I but I mean recently, you, have you know, you, actually, have you gotten back into it's that? Something or that it? I've wanted to do, mm-hmm. um, mostly because ac- uh, acrylics for me are my go-to, but oils have changed so much since I've played with them. Like yeah. there's water-based yeah. oil paints now. Like well, acrylic is so nice now that it competes mm-hmm. with it is, some oils. But you the know? blend that you can get oh, from an oil, but too much blend sometimes, really? depending on the painting. I, but I I've done like oil. And what do you what do you prefer yourself? I I prefer acrylic, but that's because I'm a impatient human being. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get it done. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, I just told you about a five minute painting I did on stage. <laughs> <laughs> if that was oil, those people would grow old waiting right. for it to finish. That's right. But I find with oil, y- yes, you can blend it in, of mm-hmm. course, because it's oil. But the last oil painting I did, and I did it on the Okanagan. Did you see my my post about that? I was so jealous. It was just when a wa- I saw yeah, you just, just a perfect setting, right on painting. right on the side of the Okanagan. I found this sweet spot where you know that there was a, a rock by a, a friend's place, and and we had it set up where they actually built me an easel right there, and then these brothers and really? they did such a phenomenal job, and I couldn't help it. I got going right away, and I used oil then, but I found that boy it. it I mean, and I don't use oil often, but it just blends too much. Mm-hmm. You can't do the fine lines like you can with acrylic. Yeah. I'm sure there's a way of doing it. Mm-hmm. But because of my inexperience, I treated it like acrylic at mm-hmm. times. And I found there was just, the colors you get are amazing, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of blending. It has so, to be a specific. But I'd like to right. see how, it, because with my acrylic portraits, mm-hmm. I can only get a certain amount of blend. And I can blend fairly, fairly well you do. on my portraits. You do. I would like to see the difference with an oil portrait for mm-hmm. me on the blend. I just think it would become that much realer. I agree to a certain extent where oil, yes, you can blend. You can get those shades that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. But just remember a couple of things besides that oil takes a while to work with and, and doesn't dry as fast. With acrylic, um, sure, you might not get that blend you're looking for. But if you're, especially because your work is so unique, mm-hmm. if you're trying to get into um a little more blending, a little more realism. You have to change a lot about yours because you're right. not hyper realistic. No, Neither that's right. am I. So I can get to a certain point, but if I push myself further, it feels like you're entering a different zone now. Where if you're actually going for realism, mm-hmm. there's a lot more than just blending to fix. Mm-hmm. Of course. So you got to decide what kind of artist you are. Yeah. Your work is very unique, but that's because you don't need to blend all that. You don't need to make it look real. It's mm-hmm. unique to you. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying never change your style. But that's what makes you so unique is is the fact that that you don't need to bl- do all that blending. You're not looking for hyper realism, which you know what's is so funny very hard is that accomplish. I love hearing this type of feedback about my mm-hmm. work because, mm-hmm. like, I know how I feel about my work, but I don't like. I know I have somewhat of a style, yeah. but I don't see it as apparent as like the way that you describe it. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm still finding my style. I think we, I think we never we never distinct. get there. We never well, actually arrive at a finish line. Where we're like, "Hello, style." <laughs> you know what I mean? I, no, I, no. Just, but I guess but I'm what, not really looking for that. But I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like. But you said you, you know you know her work when you see it. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah. that that That's so you start blending an and try to make it look realistic and going hyper. Re, you know, you gotta you gotta change a lot mm-hmm. about your art to make it hyper That's realistic. Right. Mm-hmm. I would have to change a ton of mine. Mm-hmm. So. You got to be careful what your style is Mm -hmm. and and what you're trying to accomplish. Because if you're just looking for a little more blend and color, all of a sudden you've lost what makes Natalie Natalie. Not because it doesn't look any better, but because you have a specific style that people notice and and, uh, are are attracted to. And -hmm. then all of a sudden you change it because, I mean, you can practice and just Mm kind of see how that feels. But I don't think blending your colors or trying to make it realistic is, you can try it for fun, just challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think your style speaks for itself. You don't need to, you don't need to change it. You can, you can add to it. But right. I, I think the the route that you're trying to go and it is hard to blend with acrylic. It more is than hard. It is with yes. oil. The oil just kind of does the job for and you. And you have to work so fast. You got to mm-hmm. practice. You got to have your spray bottle beside you and know how much water. I actually water don't to have. have a spray bottle. Do you use a lot? Of I spray? use it. I use it. You Do can you overuse it because you you end up with these little markings, these little droplets mm. Mm. that are on a, on a on a very close up scale where you, you can notice it then. But you start mixing a little bit more water in it. Uh, you start 
what I noticed is as soon as I have my colors set up on mm -hmm. the palette, mm -hmm. ready to go, where before I would do literally one color at yes. a time, just because I didn't feel like spending all the work and getting ready because I'm that patient. But mm -hmm. if you are patient enough and you start lining up your colors that way, it's all right there. So right. you said it takes, and we all know it takes about 20 minutes for acrylic to dry, 15, mm -hmm. 20. Mm -hmm. Well, in that 20 minutes, you have all your colors there. But if you're mixing and then trying to match a color and then going back and, and finding another one in that time yes it does become um very hard to blend because now you're you're almost peeling the other color off when it dries you know that yeah that what you get when it starts kind of taking away from the other one yeah mm -hmm. it gets so chunky. that's what starts happening but as far as your art goes like i said the one thing that makes you stand out not not just the colors you use or how beautiful your work is what stands out for me when it comes to your work natalie is the fact that um you're very consistent with your work mm -hmm. it does it seems like no matter like whatever day i'm having you could tell that's controlled <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know what i mean like oh omar was having a bad day when he did this one like it's it's i'm all over i'm a nutcase in my head when yeah. it comes to art whatever i'm feeling however i'm feeling mm -hmm. where with you it you you seem to at least I'm thinking this, that you push all that aside and you stick to your true self, mm -hmm. which is very hard for an artist to do because I have Aww. never done two paintings that look like they belong together. Is that and right, I've done hey? about 220 really? now, I think, something like yeah, that. Yeah, you've done a lot. Well, mm -hmm. but they, I just, I don't have any that look like a set together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, oh, so that's, that's what really stands really interesting. your work out for me. Thank you. You know, so you can try things. You more than welcome yeah, to use uh, my Yeah, absolutely. Studio. I want to try. But hey. I have, Anytime, by like, the way, I have a lot of over. oil that I don't use. So let me give you a bunch because that shit's expensive. Ooh. It is. Did right? you? Are you self-taught or did you go to? Yes, sir, I am. Yeah, you see, yeah. That's, that adds a whole new dimension to Mind you if I don't know about anything. being an artist. Huh? Mind you, if I don't know anything, YouTube's always there, right? You, oh, yeah. If I don't okay. know how to work these mics, YouTube's there. <laughs> Google. Right. Google exactly. everything. Or Google. Yeah, when I was a youngster, I didn't have this YouTube. <laughs> yeah, worldwide web. YouTube, webs, you speak of, you darn kids. <laughs> Interwebs. No, I, um, I, it just adds another dimension. Uh, if you if if somebody didn't sit you down and say this is how you work with oil and these are the specific oh techniques. it would speed up the process tenfold. it would speed up. so then I think we're all in the same boat because I was figuring out as I went along like in terms of what do I need to do to get these different types of um, results right I didn't know yeah. I didn't know man yeah. high school is not a that's you know. That's like that's a, a that's, social. That's baby. I excelled that's in art <laughs> in high school. Yeah. I did too, actually. Oh, yeah. oh really? It was B B B A plus stole ninety nine. No, like I, I was, did. I did. I did. I did. Would okay. you like to run the class? Like I was that guy in art, but, yeah, but everything if, else, I just. But once somebody, like, but, somebody teaches yeah, like you social studies, man. yeah. Oh, somebody teaches, somebody teaches you the technique for um, you know blending oils properly, right? Or oh, yeah, to achieve a particular effect. And that's in your repertoire that's in your head. When you sit down to do a painting, you'll get it done much quicker, right? Mm -hmm. it's, I just find that if you, if you don't know and we're kind of figuring it out, for me, that was kind of always part of the enjoyment and the, the process as well. But uh, it came at a cost. It take me forever to do anything, really. Whereas some people, they would bang out paintings in a couple of hours. And I mean, like, yeah. really that's this one nice right here. Paintings. Yeah, totally. Like, I'm a fast painter, but that one. Yeah, oh, I can I can go fast, but that was uh, <laughs> but 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 sometimes I I I go to the art walk and I bump into somebody, maybe not Natalie, but somebody that's gone above and beyond with the detail of their mm -hmm. work, and it's yeah. you know I ask her how long it took her to paint, and she says three months. Yeah, I look at my brother. I've it looks never... at me. He's like, you would never sit in front of them. <laughs> for two. So it's all in how patient you are and how, yeah, how hard yeah, you yeah. work and work on it. But with oil, it changes the color quite a bit. Where mm. acrylic, I feel like the colors stay true because of that mm -hmm. uh, drying time factor. Right. Where mm. oil, you, you and you've worked with oil before, or any of us have, where you take one color and another one. And you always get these different blends, and yeah. because they blend so well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your purples turn into a, you know a darker hue or a lighter. Mm -hmm. hue, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you got to be very um, aware of your color choices when it comes to oil, mm -hmm. because of the fact that it changes uh, so often on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's besides the fact that how hard it is to clean your brushes mm -hmm. after doing an oil painting. Mm -hmm. That was a battle. It took me longer to clean up my shit than to, <laughs> yeah, than yeah, to no. actually finish an oil painting. Yeah. So when I went through that and it d destroyed tools I was using, and I, mm -hmm. I I got I got oil paint on the rocks, but on the Okanagan to this day you can go back and tell somebody to paint it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, oil demands a lot more patience and respect and and um, 
awareness when it comes to your color choices and your right. color wheel and your understanding of that. So it's challenging for sure, but mm-hmm. it's just a matter of, of how patient you are with it, how long you want to spend on it. Mm-hmm. I don't. Sometimes I want to be done in nine hours or in three hours or a couple of days. But wow. as far as painting for a couple of weeks or a month, it's like, oh, Are you man. a fast painter? No. What? Hell no. <laughs> Months, man. I, the only time I ever painted um, with any Do you shimmy speed. and shake on stage? Uh, I don't do, I will, you will never see, I don't paint on stage. It's a very private thing for me. And yeah. it's always, it's strange. I got weird things. I can't do it unless it's like late at night. Nobody's got to be around. It's, oh, really? I got to have my, I got to have, I got to have my things in order. I got to have, have my to papers have, like, in Bob order. Playing in the background, I have to have or? music. It's really weird. This is why I'll never, I'm not a, I'm not an artist, man. I'm not a, you are not like you an guys. artist. I have seen not your like, work. Yeah, not like you guys. Though. It takes so much time. It's, it's, it's just, I would never, I could never make a living out of it. The only time I ever painted anything with any speed was commission, commission. Like some, I need this, Get that money. I need this, <laughs> I need this by such and such a time or, uh, oh, I went to New York one time and I came back. I was on fire in my head. I was just like, I had this image in my head and I painted this painting in, I don't know, like in a couple of days, which for me is exceptional. Um, but that's it. Otherwise I'm meandering and kind of figure mainly because i'm trying to figure stuff out you know? yeah so you got to <laughs> you know? be in your element you got to be in, be in my right element state of mind. all this weird stuff can't do it if my house is a mess can't do it oh can't the house has got to be clean i clean the house i got my papers in mine order. doesn't need to be clean no it's got you it's got you, yeah, I need you know to, what I'm, i need I'm, to be I'm, in the zone i'm with though. darren on this one because if my studio's not clean you do not want me to pay <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> you might no. as well just grab my niece and get her to I really wish. Hey, I had one. my studio's open to you. Okay. Where's anytime. your studio? Is it in your home? It's right here. It's right yeah, behind man. you. There we go. It's sectioned yeah. out. Yeah. 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 I did it it's, in my uh, home. I, I have you ever had a, a studio outside of your home? Some people tell me that it's it's um better. It's helpful sometimes because you're it's a destination and you were leaving your home, you're leaving around to go to do this task it's kind of like and the people mindset. that say you know i'd rather have a gym membership because when i get in the car i'm committed i get to the I gym yes right I walk yes yeah, where yeah. in your house you get on the treadmill phone rings your favorite tv show comes on and you're gone yeah but yeah, yeah. it's just a matter of how committed you how are committed to either working are. out that's or, a great or, analogy or, you know what i mean so yeah. it, it depends i've had it both ways where you know a buddy stops by with a joint uh, okay <laughs> i can deal with that what is and this then, joint that you speak of right <laughs> It's a smoke-free environment. Uh-huh. Um, and then three more stop by later on that night. You're like, all right, man, you just screwed up my painting. Stop <laughs> coming. You know what I mean? So where they can find you is not always a good spot. Have yeah, I ever painted outside of the studio? Point. Yes. Uh, my brother has his own studio now, so we kind of share. And mm. since I kind of helped him, uh, you know, in his uh, art adventure recently, and uh, you got to see some of his work. Oh, it goes incredible. with the theme that you're talking about. Which, which more than I was, that's what I was telling I'll, about I'll, the I'll wall. Sh- I'll show you. I'll show you after okay. the podcast. But um, he's uh, he's done some great work. And so I've shared his studio before. But as far as leaving my studio. You'd rather be here. Yeah. yeah. Come Listen to your music. I like and, having my yeah. own studio in my home only because then if I want to get up in the middle of the night and start painting. Yeah. That's your best ideas just, are in the do shower. It, How many right? of us are sitting there in bed? You're like, oh, you know, it'd be a great painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then zoop, you're out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> In your yeah. underwear. Just yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> for the and guys, it doesn't I mean. matter, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, mine's always Why been in the Why can't the girls home. be in their underwear? Because well, then they need a bra. And then you're just... Okay, is it that type of yeah. podcast? Is that what? <laughs> yeah, 18 plus. <laughs> this is Omar. <laughs> you, know what's, uh, you know what's harder than uh, than painting with oil? It's sad. Painting with resin. Oh. Yeah, Ooh, you, resin. Because she's seen me get into that a little bit, which is... Resin is if you want it to varnish your painting, yeah. but instead of using a spray or um, a medium that you can just brush on, mm. a resin is a chemical. It's an epoxy that you mix, you know, two it's parts like to one. Glass. Yeah. It's it's basically um, it's as if you're working with crazy glue times ten, yeah. where the smell is awful, the chemicals yeah. are are very harmful. Mm-hmm. You got to be mask on, gloves mm-hmm. on, and and you got to prep your canvas the right way. But uh, when I first tried it out just for fun, I did it on a regular canvas. Yeah. But because this is a self-leveling chemical, mm. you're best to use it on a wooden canvas mm-hmm. because there's no gift to it. There's no there's no dip. Even mm-hmm. though our canvases don't have dips in them, mm-hmm. especially the, the nice gallery ones you get at Delta, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they still have that weight, especially because it's such a heavy product, you're pouring right. it on. So picture me taking a, about a glass full of this stuff mm. after it's mixed mm-hmm. and you got about a two minute mix and then you can pour it on and once you pour it 
you have about 15 to 20 minutes to um, squeegee it on mm. where it, it levels itself. But you got to kind of get used to the technique of spreading it evenly on your canvas, mm -hmm. maybe having it go over. But mm. it literally dries like glass. Mm -hmm. I've seen this. And it is, this, yeah. and it is sealed to. There's um, the art of resin. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she she does most of her art with resin. So, uh, but she does colored resin. You can actually color the stuff know, using a I've dye and stuff. It. I've yeah. only used the clear stuff. Okay, it's pretty expensive. Was that your Sinatra? Was that was no that resin? <laughs> That was glue. That you was have nine life. hours for the yeah. <laughs> I would kill half the crowd with that smell. But it's um. <laughs> it's a it's a it's an awesome way to seal your your painting in mm -hmm. basically a glass of about this thick okay, and it's uh a, a, and it's great if you're looking to make something durable and last uh, mm -hmm. we're not talking about 10 20 years it'll last forever that way oh wow okay. but it is very harmful to work with if you're not very cautious with it you got to wear gloves mm -hmm. if you get it on something i don't it's care done. if it's your favorite shoe so your right. hair shave your head you know what i mean like you're done never never <laughs> so don't work with resin. You'd have to work a wear a little hair net or yeah. shower cap. So you have to be very cautious with Sounds it. It's kind of exciting, it, though, but right? it is exciting. Yeah. Um, and and I, I used it on the Demar Derozan painting um, because it was on wood, and I thought it was perfect for it. It's a, like I said, it's a self leveler, so you got to get mm. your stuff already. Mm. Have it's it like all. This. Uh, have it. Finish. Yeah, it's it's. it's um, I wish I had one here to show you, but resin on top of your painting, a wooden one, is mm -hmm. uh, is a awesome way to get your 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 painting kind of sealed up properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, it won't work for everything because some paintings shouldn't be shiny and. I was going to say it has a high gloss, does it not? It's, it's there's always, a matte it's, resin. It's like glass. Is there a matte one? Though? It's picture, oh, okay. picture, uh, a picture in a frame with yeah. a glass over top of it. But oh. that glass is not separate. It's, like it's built permanent. In. It's built into it. It mm. it's sealed. So you got to heat it up after. So mm. once you pour it, that twenty minutes of you leveling it out, mm. you got to have a heat gun or a torch. Okay. And because it creates these little fine bubbles that start coming up to the surface. It's just air trying to escape. Mm -hmm. You burn those off so they start popping. And then if you catch a hair or if you don't have anything that you can cover it with while it's drying, like an empty box where it ex it's exposed to the elements or things flying around the air, you notice everything. Even if a, if it's a little piece of lint or just something dust very microscopic, you can see it. And, and if the light hits it right, you could see a, whatever's there, it picks it up. So it's mm, very delicate but boy when you do it and and, and master it because I, I screwed up a couple of paintings before i got there mm -hmm. and it's wonderful when it's done and, and that's I've over anything over me. acrylic over oil over uh, like uh, as far as if uh, you were to put putting it, so a resin on top if you were to put a resin yes. on top of you can even i i even did on one where i left my brush the last brush i used to sign with i left it on there oh that's and good. then i poured it over so it seals that mm. brush yeah. forever and it's you know that's if you want to be corny that's and I want to do clever. resin That's because I want to do layers. So I've seen you it can. before yes. where you do your painting. You put one thin layer of resin and then you paint on top of the resin. And then you oh, put and then you resin layer. it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, then you've taken the thing from 20 pounds to 40. Like well, it's, yeah, yeah, it yeah. gets yeah. heavy. It takes, <laughs> sure. a, you know. But the, the effect would be really yeah. interesting. Oh, it's, it's With great. The gold leafing. It's great. Mm. Yeah. So you can put pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. You can break your glasses down, lay them down and pour resin over it and it would seal it for life. It's, uh, uh, but you got to get the stuff. The reason that it gets expensive because you can get it at Sherwin Williams, right? Yes. But it's not, it's more industrial. Once right. you go to the art stores mm -hmm. like um, uh, Delta Art or Colors or anything like that, what they have is a little bit smaller, but at mm -hmm. least it's UV resistant. So it keeps it, it keeps it very From clear. Fading. It doesn't change yeah. color because mm -hmm. you never know. Maybe you have your painting, you and know, beside sunlight. a window mm -hmm. where the sun hits yeah. it all the time. So, uh, but those are, I mean, you're talking about oil being messy. That's another level. Yeah. So besides resin, that's I can't see what's harder. Thing. Yeah. You have to, be, you have to have a ventilated yeah. uh, studio for that. You mentioned Delta Art twice. I just want to say. I like John. John, John, the owner. Great guy. Yeah. Great he's guy. not an artist. You know this? He's not. A, he's well, not aren't a, he's you friends not with a, him? He's, he says yeah, he's but I, I always not, thought he dabbled in art. I Maybe thought I so too. He said, "Well, he says no, nah, I'm not an artist, but he knows more about product than but you anybody." Say that too, when you are an artist. It's like that guy that doesn't no. play hockey, but he knows every player knows where he everything. was born, what hand he shoots, yeah, what yeah, team yeah. he's on. Yeah. And some guys don't know shit about hockey, but they play the game. I and know. They're good I, at it. I've so talk, yeah, you're either involved or you're just a student of the of the game That's where right. you're, you're very yeah. knowledgeable, oh, which is great because we need John to be knowledgeable. I don't he give a shit everything. what he does at home. But I need Delta to know where, where your stuff knows, is. He knows everything. <laughs> but no, he's very good. I'm glad he's got that that store, store is not close to my house because it's an actual, I know, it's, it's like a, a planned trip. Right? Because I if I go there, yeah. like. I have their platinum card. 
Do they have I platinum rack cards? Up. Why? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well. They know you by first name. They're like, yeah, oh, yeah. hey, oh my, what will it be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the canvases they have are so uh, quality. Uh, are so, yeah, always, no, it's not like always. walking into Michaels. No. Although Michaels, I mean, you can get some great game. deals they've sometimes, actually, and they have the gallery grade. I actually yeah. shop a lot at Michaels, and they canvas. get pretty big. Yes, me yeah. too. But Delta Art, if you're looking for like an eight foot by five foot canvas, they can get. They've always had the most unique sizes and dimensions, but they also have the roll. So I make my own canvas. Oh no! I buy a, a four hundred dollar roll, makes me about uh, maybe ten canvases without the wood stretched and stapled on. So you if, do I, that if here? I'm looking for it, do you yeah. that, you'll do yeah. that here. Yeah. Well, oh, it's not like well, resin. Man. I don't need to be ventilated. Just no, no, no. That's very ambitious. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think people appreciate the fact that you take a little bit longer on their on their on mm-hmm. their painting, whether it's you know being. Uh, creative enough to designing the the canvas yourself or the, mm-hmm. the the skeleton on the inside the frame or or actually framing the painting when it's well, done. that's a skill mm-hmm. in it well the, the, yeah. yeah you kind of have to be a carpenter i got a, yeah. a miter saw in the garage that i like to use once in a while and uh if you have the time do it it's a little bit harder but like i said if somebody's paying you fifteen hundred two thousand dollars for a painting take the extra time mm-hmm. if of somebody's course. trying to negotiate and hassle you over 500 can you make it 400 it's like you'll take what i give you <laughs> and right. you'll be you happy about it. Yeah. you know so it, it depends depends on the on the client you want to be consistent but sometimes your clients are are the same they some of them give you creative freedom some of them are like this is the picture i want it identical to mm-hmm. this with the flower in the background you're like are you sure? Because that flower is pretty ugly. We could put in something <laughs> else. No, that's sentimental. It's like some things just look like better as a photo. Can you do it yeah. on this style? Yeah. Do you agree, that's Natalie? That's my favorite thing. Do you agree, Natalie? I agree. That some things look better as a photo mm-hmm. and some things I look better as a painting? Absolutely. That's a good agree. point. Yeah. Like if you take a Van Gogh painting and, mm-hmm. and, and show somebody it as a photo, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's a beautiful cafe outside. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have the same ring to it. Just like some photos you see blow you away yeah, but you turn that into a painting. Yeah, yeah. you yeah, kind of lost what that, that's right. You know, yeah. so uh, people tend to think, especially clients that approach you, they think a, a certain picture they have in their phone would look great as a painting. Yeah, and you kind of have to school them on some pictures look better as you're like you're better blowing that picture up mm-hmm. than getting me to paint it. That's right. And some paintings, even though the picture might not look that great, but you know, as mm-hmm. an artist, mm-hmm. uh, a painting of that would look, look exactly incredible. what you can change about it. That would you know, uh, really, you know, hit home with it. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. That's resin. Yes. Resin. I haven't. I'm waiting for you, you know. to teach me. Oh man. I haven't <laughs> used it in a long time. I still have some. <laughs> it sounds scary. I can't lie. It's, Ooh, I can't. It sounds, uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's all about scary. You're like, all in or you're done. That's yeah. The you prep know, work is what's exhausting. Lint. The you know, scary part after, is if you have made this masterpiece. Yeah. And you've never dabbled in resin, and now you're just gonna throw a layer of resin on top of it. And oh, then what I, happens? Yeah. Mm. But the way that's the, the scary the, part. But the, the way actual... I would teach you it, I would you'd, you'd be skipping a few steps, few mistakes. Okay. I made. Like I just got oh, into yeah, it, yeah. but um, yeah, it's it's a little it's a little scary. But once it's on there, it, the prep work is what's difficult. But once mm-hmm. you pour it on there, mm-hmm. and you have that ten minutes of play time, it's like so that's it. It's quick. Watch. Like once you actually do it, it's it is satisfying mm-hmm. to watch, and then it's done. But you're all, it's kind of like setting up your, your base properly. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're going to screw the whole thing up. But if you do it properly, it takes a lot of patience and prep work. But the actual process is minutes, 10 wow. minutes. Really? Yeah. It's resin. Leave it. Don't touch it. Cover it. Whatever. Uh, open up the windows. Stop wear sniffing it. Stop sniffing it. Your eye color is changing. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? <laughs> Don't wear a fuzzy sweater. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, that's resin. But who is your favorite artist? I know... Uh, I know Natalie doesn't want to talk about it, but it's really hard. Like we all have favorite artists, people that changes, it changes, it changes. Have they been dead for 500 years? Uh, no, that, uh, that Kendi Wiley, Wiley, Kendi Wiley. I don't know if you know him. He does, uh, he's right now. He's kind of one of my favorite. He is, um, he did recently the, uh, the Obamas when they were in office Mm -hmm. and he does this hyper realism. Um, but he takes, African Americans, and he puts them in these classic poses and classic, uh, recognizable uh, like Renaissance situations. poses. Yes, or? yeah, okay. indeed. There's there's a picture of I think Riza on a, on a horse. Okay, uh, he's dressed <laughs> like a hey, it's like taking amazing. back a few hundred years. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, and um, and then he'll, he also uh, he has uh, floral prints often associated with it. So it's just everyday like snapshots of everyday people that you might see in some African-American There's community. a McDonald's in the background, they're on a horse? <laughs> no, no, it's 
Ah, you gotta check him out though. Kende Wiley, right? Kende Wiley. Okay. Uh, he's from Ghana. Mm-hmm. I like him. Uh, I don't know Banksy. I like who does it, Banksy. right? Come we on, don't even man. know what he looks like. No, you don't know. But, but I, that's, I, that's I like, what I like, I like about that him. imagery. How it's clean, and it's uh, it's provocative, and it's it's and it's, very it's, expensive. Oh, ridiculous! But I I, I I like the simplicity behind. Yes, and he uses a lot of um, uh, pop culture references, and I I like I dig, I dig that too. I like the one of the soldier looking like from far away is tossing a, a grenade mm. but in his hands are flowers oh yeah yeah, yeah. so he gives a spin on things that mm. you know you don't normally think of but when you see how he portrays it it's it's very unique and yeah and uh peaceful you know what yeah. i mean he's got a peaceful spin on on his art mm-hmm. um i'm a big fan of da vinci i'm a big fan oh, wow. of all yeah. the older artists picasso whoever yeah whoever's been involved in art i'm just especially if it's different like knowing da vinci was the first artist to kind of take that side profile mm-hmm. pose painting that most people were used to in the 1400s mm-hmm. and change it where the Mona Lisa. I mean, that's what made the Mona Lisa so popular is because for the first time you have a painter portraying a woman that's that's almost looking at the camera, right? Where that was unheard of. It was yeah. side profile, that's right, yeah. and and that was it. Mm-hmm. So. For him to be innovative that way, for Michelangelo to come in and start, uh, you know, chiseling these big blocks of yeah. of, of granite, um, and doing it at twenty five years old, you know, Michelangelo um, carved David mm-hmm. at the age of twenty five. No, I didn't realize he was so twenty five years old. That's outstanding. Mm. And and I always tell people the story. But did you know Da Vinci, being twenty five years older than Michelangelo, mm-hmm. they're both from Florence, Italy. Mm-hmm. But when Da Vinci went back to Florence after kind of taking a hiatus, going to Milan for a bit. He came back and he kept hearing about this 25-year-old that is is making all kinds of noise and he carved David. Because David, the block of David, mm-hmm. was, was originally given to Da Vinci. But because oh. he was into weapons of, of, of war, mm-hmm. he was summoned by the Pope to start cr- working on big bows and big machines and mm-hmm. his invention of the tank and the helicopter mm-hmm. was all done by Da Vinci, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. his sketches. So yeah. he was he was passionate about weapons of war. Mm-hmm. When he came back after the dust settled, he came back to find this 25-year-old has taken that block that was given to him at and the turned time into, and turned it into wow. David. Yeah, yeah. He got so upset. He wrote in a, in a, in a memoir, he, he wrote that, you know, at least when I paint, my clients are fed grapes and drinking wine and listening to music and it's mm-hmm. very peaceful and, uh, uh, and the rest of it. But when Michelangelo works, he's working in a warehouse, it's dusty, he's chiseling away, making all kinds of noise. <laughs> and Michelangelo mm. read that. Right. So they bumped into each other at a market and they got into a pushing match. So most people don't know that mm-hmm. Michelangelo and, and, and Da Vinci actually hated each other. Wow. And there was a, uh, you know, so those turtles don't actually get along. That's a myth. Oh, wow. Michelangelo. <laughs> 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 but uh, it, yeah. there's so much interesting you history. Do a comic book reference like, just now? Yeah. Well, well <laughs> that's, that's who the turtles <laughs> were named after. Yeah, yeah. Artists, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, in, in real life, they never got along. Not, oh, not, wow. as, not as well as you think. But it's just interesting that's looking funny. back and, and seeing, uh, you know, uh, Michelangelo going from David to painting the Sistine Chapel where mm-hmm. he got upset if you referred to him as a painter. Oh, right. He really did. I heard mm-hmm. that actually. Michelangelo yeah. did not want you to know he was a painter. He's a sculptor first mm. and he paints just on the side. I mean, this is a guy that painted the Sistine Chapel yeah. saying, please don't refer to me as a painter. Mm-hmm. The nicest piece of art that's that, recognizable mm. you know and and boy the pope used to beat him when he did that uh, <laughs> sistine chapel yeah with his neck being cranked up like that yeah. uh, all the way up those floors have yeah. you had a chance to go visit uh next year season? next year are first you going time? yeah yeah well i'm ending up in lebanon okay. home sweet home mm. but yeah. i am gonna go w- with my brother through uh through paris um through um you know Italy and, and Greece probably ending up at Greece but when I'm in Italy Florence is definitely a place any artist should check out Absolutely. and I've never been there mm-hmm. Me so I want to go to the, the Louvre yeah. oh, you know yeah. what I mean have you been yeah. no no should it should it be on say video yeah did Greece? you see her video oh which one which one the Beyonce new? and, and Jay-Z what's that what's that video called ape shit, ape shit? oh the video of them in the in the Louvre in front I, of the Mona Lisa no I haven't watched it you're an artist and you haven't seen that video? 
I, that's the the, the art. Shame in on you. I'm not like a really big fan of I that. I haven't either. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> it, it it it. I mean, I, we'll I don't. I, I don't. Um, <laughs> we'll Google it before. I don't look them up too often. But YouTube. that particular video, because it was all to do with with art, and yeah. Yeah. and they were standing beside some some historical pieces of art was was awesome to see i i really like that but i've seen mm -hmm. photos yeah yeah like still it's photos, stills it's, of the video. it's a it's a great video if you're an artist mm -hmm. not because okay. the lyrics are leaping off the screen but it's the um, imagery yeah exactly the okay. imagery is amazing so we'll that's a place check that out that's a the, well. <laughs> so that's where i'm gonna go next year <laughs> i'm gonna stop by florence and uh and check all that stuff out for real because i've, I've done my homework on it but it's not like being there i guess right well, who else moves you uh, in terms of artists so art oh man i'm inspired by so many artists so many different uh I, I, if if i just meet or see or witness somebody just being creative and pushing themselves where it's 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 a little bit um it's not the norm yes yeah. i feel like i get inspired by that it's hard to say it's it's hard for me to sit here and say da vinci inspires me when none of my work looks like his no it's hard to say michelangelo inspires me when I've never sculpted anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how does that happen? But mm -hmm. I, I think their drive to be innovative, like I'm saying with, with all their, their work earlier on, uh, Picasso going from realism to cubism, mm -hmm. um, not because cubism is, is, is so amazing to, to look at, but it's just a man pushing himself to that next level and mm -hmm. trying to do something that hasn't been done. It's and it's different. such a hard industry to do it in because so much has been, done, been done from body paint to resin to yeah. people have tried so many things. But once I see somebody pushing themselves, mm -hmm. they automatically, I automatically become a fan. So no matter who they are, where they are, um, yeah, D Da Agreed. Vinci is just an old, old one. But yeah, um, yeah not because I, I aspire to be like them, but because they started a whole bunch of shit that, you know, mm -hmm. people... Uh, people still look up to now and and that to me is is the essence of art just mm -hmm. doing something that like banksy banksy's mm -hmm. work is not hard to do me and natalie can go outside you and yourself and we can do it on the side of a wall <laughs> yeah. and we can sell it as a banksy yeah. but because it's innovative because innovative. it's new because he had that month to spend in new york and he wasn't mm -hmm. from there mm -hmm. because he doesn't show his face yeah that's uh, another part of the you know what i mean well. so yeah. so there's a there's a mystery there mm -hmm. yeah. and i think any artist would appreciate another artist just being mysterious and innovative and pushing themselves so mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down to do i have a favorite uh, if i had to i'd love to own a piece of art by da vinci if you have uh, a few million dollars, yeah, that's right. a few million. If you have about million. 60, 70 million. million laying around. Yeah, in a um, safe place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's a good example of never never starting art too late, where he mm -hmm. started it at 50. Mm. That's when Da Vinci started painting. Oh, um, I Yes, yes. And, and, uh, and, but you know who's an amazing artist, uh, mm. and he's a sculptor and a tattoo artist, is uh, June Shaw. He's in L.A. A friend of mine told me about him. June Shaw. June Shaw. Okay. I think it's J-U-N space C-H-A. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Asian guy, but he's an amazing tattoo artist, which I just recently got into. So that's a whole nother uh, so canvas exciting and tools. For me. Remind me to mention something about yeah, that. Yeah. So <laughs> so he's a tattoo artist, but he also he also is a sculptor. Like he he sculpted David in the same way Michelangelo wow. did, and he has photos of it in his shop. The guy's yeah, well. insanely talented. Yeah. So as far as like new school versus old school what yeah. inspires me june shaw is is definitely mm -hmm. somebody to look up to if you're an inspiring artist yeah uh, and i think that's how you spell his name j-u-n space or underscore c-h-a yeah. okay amazing yeah. artist yeah. yeah and sculptor awesome. I'm a yeah. tattooaholic, so I can't wait to hear more about your Right? What do you adventures? want on your sleeve? <laughs> I just I just finished my apprenticeship in uh, St. Albert, and uh, that's a whole nother Are you ballgame. You're training to be a tattoo artist? No, I never was. I uh, I just got into it about, realistically started thinking about it about five months ago. Just got into it recently. Come um, on. That's I know, fantastic. Right? Really? You, you know what it is? It's, it's <laughs> nerve-wracking at the beginning, but once you start tattooing, yeah. Um, what I enjoyed about it the most, which I never thought I would, is that uh, permanent factor of it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Is when I'm painting, I could easily go over that line and mess it up. And How go many behind. times have you painted completely over a canvas? Oh, yeah, I hated that. <laughs> they don't know, but that's what actually three paintings do? in one. <laughs> that's good. But the canvas moves on you a little bit. You have to be a little more aware of, of um, you know, the uh, cross contaminations and, yeah. and, and being very like, like you have to treat it like a clinic, mm -hmm. like Absolutely. the way you'd, you would walk into a doctor's office. Yeah. So 
Having said that, the cleanliness factor, the tools are a little bit different because now you're working with needles and they're layered and, you know, five round, seven round, uh, the shader needles, packing color. Um, surprisingly, the color is the same. Hmm? Are you going to get a tattoo? He's thinking of one right <laughs> no, now. No, no, I can't. Mine's grinding I can't. right now. <laughs> no, no, I can't. I had the opportunity to have one a long time ago, but then, you know, it's tattoos are different now. There was a time if somebody had a tattoo, Oh, they were like badass. Uh, they were a badass. Yeah. They were either in jail or <laughs> they were a sailor. You know, they did military yeah. or they were an artist or extremely wealthy with not much else going on. <laughs> now your sixteen year old nephew. Have to work. <laughs> now, now your sixteen your year old mom. nephew's got two sleeves. No, let me tell you, <laughs> you know. Most people's moms have a tattoo. Yeah. So it's not so edgy anymore. Yeah. You know, you know what's happening? I, I think I find the whole thing fascinating because um it's evolving, right? It's becoming nope, it's mainstream. Right. Well, it's jewelry. It mainstream. It's mainstream. It's I mainstream. would rather have a tattoo than always. a necklace. Yeah, it wasn't you know always I mean? mainstream. Yeah. yeah. It's so much so that you can now you can tell when somebody had the, an era when they got a tattoo. So if you look at somebody's arm, you go, "Oh, he got that barbed wire in the '90s, right?" <laughs> or he got that the line, tribal. Because the lines <laughs> are three centimeters. You know, thick. he got he got that tribal. He got that tribal in the in the '90s. You know, and so it's it's gone now. It's at the point where it has different trends, right? I think yeah. they kind of tried to move away from that so people started going back to the old um some like japanese uh sleeves yeah. and, and yeah. you know that's, koi a, whole another, and the whole, that's yeah. a whole genre now yeah. um well not now it's always been a genre yeah. but people started to move away from these like hardcore trends and, and went to more classic uh yeah. designs right you know it's funny because the owner of maximum colors mm -hmm. where i am um yeah. she even goes a step further so it's funny you mentioned lines with her work yeah. when she draws out the stencil and puts it on you yeah. uh, those blue lines that the stencil the mm -hmm. ink that mm -hmm. washes off after a couple of yeah, swipes yeah. at it she doesn't even include them so she's literally she starts hands. shading oh, so the yeah. edging is not even is non-existent so as far as realism and that watercolor look that yeah. you know, everybody's into uh, she accomplishes that very well and well, I've never seen it done before until she showed me I'm not saying that's so my no style outlines. of tattoo, no, but oh. she hardly uses outlines. Oh. Okay. But it makes for a great tattoo. Or photo, there's photo realism. I saw, I saw a piece. Oh hell yeah! At Home Depot yesterday, and I said, I'm sorry, <laughs> I had to stop her. Yeah. I said, please, may I? And you know, she showed me, and she gave me the name of the place. But I was mesmerized by what I saw because it looked like a. At first, it looks like a photograph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it was excellent. But there's I, some I, I pretty say, outstanding tattoo artists in this oh, city. Oh brilliant. I, mm -hmm hands down mm -hmm. we're uh, we're I actually can't wait to get comfortable enough to do like a back piece or an entire oh, wow. sleeve and because you're still learning i mean yes it's different tools and different mm -hmm. canvases and different colored canvases and and all that and, and you got to be uh, super super clean and careful um it's a bona fide it's, art it's, form. it's it's a it's a mm -hmm. challenge and it's, it's a, and it and i can't wait to just keep pushing myself that's really exciting so you got to do it uh, we're actually introducing that uh, to Five Artists, One Love this year. We 20, have, 20 minutes to finish a tattoo? I'm you, 20 minutes. And you, <laughs> have you, to use a, you have to use a Mario. <laughs> Five minutes, that's all I need. Five minutes and I do a portrait on you. Uh, it look like shit. Just right, Mom. <laughs> bleed all over the place. But. No, it's not an art battle, but we actually... So it's usually, it's usually um, visual artists, painters, photo uh, photographers, sculptors. Those are the staples. Yeah. Um, we had designed for the first time uh la the year before last and this year we're going to be doing a tattoo artist there's a there's a gentleman in edmonton that um is a tattoo artist and yeah. he is uh he's going to be part of the show so the for the first time we're going to have that that uh that and the machines have things. changed so much now yeah. so the setup with a rotary and a coil mm -hmm. is so much different now you have that cheyenne pen and mm -hmm. and and literally the needles come out in a clip and then you put them back in. Mm. They're about yay big. Oh, wow. Where the old school way of doing it is you got to feed the needle in, change it I, every I time. don't even know. So it's it become easier and faster. Yeah. So that art battle using tattoo artists, no, no, this is the art time. Battle. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I'm inventing it, okay? It's, yeah, it's nothing I to do with you. I will come to that show. Me and Natalie are in you, on it. You, you spearhead that <laughs> yeah. and get a good lawyer, yeah. and I will Get be a good there. lawier. Just sign a waiver. Just sign a waiver. I'd like to see the gutsy canvases that walk in and say, I'll be your next canvas, 20 minutes. Oh, easily. You'd be able to. You'll have two minutes to discuss the tattoo first. Now that you're evolving your five artists, maybe you should do a body painting. That would be. I, I only know two body painters in Edmonton. You and this Perry Medina. Have you heard of that guy? No. Oh, he's really talented too. Really? He's, yeah. He's. But your yours was very specific. When I saw yours, it was uh, that you had. You were saying that you were doing the tribal mm -hmm. initially, 
beautiful, elegant. It was all Afrobeat. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And I actually, oh. I handpicked, well, I, did, I kind of handpicked them. So Sherelle George, yep. um, she has her own company called Soka Fit. So she teaches Soka. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have her on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So she is also um, kind of curating models dancers stuff like that for private events mm -hmm. so she was actually the curator of finding me some models mm -hmm. but the specifics were very like i needed different um levels of skin color i needed some darker i needed some lighter because i was doing black and white paint mm -hmm. they were specific they needed to be able to dance to afrobeat and they also had to have a specific energy about them so yeah. didn't matter the body type to me that was irrelevant it was it's the aura they're giving absolutely off. yeah it makes sense so they were handpicked specifically for that event um and that's you know that's kind of what made my art come to life on the runway so oh and it did i, I saw i wasn't there unfortunately but i saw a video yeah and spoke to people that were there and it was amazing i for me it was a shock because i didn't even realize that was part of your wheelhouse that was really really cool to see that event was really amazing to me that was put on by Yof De Hay for yeah. Art State of Mind. Um, we reached out to him. He was in Calgary, right? Yeah. yeah. He wanted been, to come in, show. but... He's um, been in the show. Next time. Yeah. I bet you he would have made it on time from Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring that up at some point in the but podcast. You, the you were late, but you made <laughs> it. What do you bought the song? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm appreciative for it. We, we made the, you rush a little the bit. The first but, event that I did was the for the fashion show. So it was mostly like fashionistas and people that were there for all these different designers mm -hmm. the reason why this one at london villas that yof de Hay did for art state of mind was so important to me was because this was mostly people of color that were coming to this so these are people that are people that i know you know at ethno fashion gala there was a few people that i knew but it was kind of a very different demographic mm -hmm. this was the people that i usually do art shows with so mm -hmm. to be able to bring that component into the show um, and you have to hey obviously knew what I was doing but we didn't tell anybody what I was doing so people thought I was just doing art at the event mm -hmm. so then when surprised. I brought yeah, yeah brought them out it was, well, it was you, the highest point it was really yeah. really outstanding I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure you'll continue to be innovative and I can't wait to see what you do next I can't wait to be a part of these events that you have coming up there and and I wish you all the best and I know that you're you know you've been a pioneer when it comes to like I said uh, driving art forward in Edmonton in a city that that I feel needs it you know everybody mm -hmm. talks about Vancouver and New York and yeah, LA we got and our Toronto own thing. it's We're, nice to it's yeah. nice to have a local talent and and local entrepreneurs such as yourself pushing all of us artists to um, express ourselves even further so I look forward to your you know your adventure and 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 these events coming up and Natalie um, I, I want to be invited to, to all these things. So Absolutely. if I don't make all of them, forgive me. You know, I might not be black enough for some of them. <laughs> In February. I'm, picking up well, on I'm not either. I'm picking up. Oh, are we going there? Oh, are we really no. going to do that? That's I thought whole, we were going to get away with That's a whole other mentioning. podcast. Yeah, exactly. Race. Hey, tune in. That's right. Episode seven. <laughs> um, race but, war. But even though you were late, I'm, I'm still appreciative Again, that you. That's two times I had to. brought that up. Well, because you this laughed so off far. the first one. It wasn't even like you took it seriously. I do. But, I listen. This is not how I roll. But I appreciate you coming by, uh, even though we rushed you. Natalie, uh, I got I got nothing but love for you. Always I love have, you always guys. will. I love oh. you too. And, Thank and, you. And I can't wait to see what, uh, what other event we're going to bump into each other at. And We're going to do a big art battle. Yeah. And another podcast. Never yes, know. we will. Maybe we're jumping off cliffs in a year. Who knows? Who Maybe knows I'll where our art form is going to take us? <laughs> Maybe. Like I said, if you ever need a body model for the body painting, oh, I that? can paint you while yeah. we're yeah. I, I personally <laughs> wouldn't do that too. Like I said, <laughs> bring, I a, much, bring a bring a Mach four razor, and we're good to go. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Thank I, you. I, I thank you. Absolute uh, delight. This is amazing. Thank you for yeah, being here. I I'm appreciate it. I'm excited for this podcast. Right? We can make. We can do a Omar's few art ones. Omar's doing bigger things. Oh, well, not. Yeah. Never uh, just small another, scale for like this I said, guy. another form of expression. I just wanna, uh, you know, it just never ends. You're always challenging yourself. So who knows? Maybe a podcast on on, on a mountain somewhere. Oh, okay. You know? I wonder what the reception would be like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-recorded podcast on, yeah. a, on a mountain. I've been I've been on a couple podcasts. I got to tell, tell you, me. very natural, man. You, you're is. telling me that you're just starting this. Yeah, I am. Uh, yeah, but Omar it feels is like, just, I, I, feels I like feel this like is a your, veteran or what? 
Oh, it yeah, it seems very comfortable and very very natural. Thank you. That means no, a lot. Thank I appreciate you. You're that. Thank fantastic. you. Honestly, and you seem natural in your element as well. Talking about the events that you have going, mind you, after thirteen years, you better be fucking natural. Well, it's you know pretty I mean? exciting. Yeah. Give me thirteen years, I'll look like a natural. <laughs> but no, honestly, I can't wait for these events coming up. Please keep me posted, whether it's on Absolutely. February or Facebook, February 9th. Yeah, and I February hopefully, 9th. hopefully, everybody that heard us have this podcast can look up some of Natalie's work, some of your events coming up. Five and, artists, uh, one love dot com. Yeah. yeah. Is that, that is that the website? That's the website. Yeah, and uh, you you can uh, take a look and you'll see some of the um, the work that's been there in the past. And uh, call for submissions is there. And yeah, a snapshot of the things that have happened over the last x amount of years. So, yeah. yeah, man. And he's also on Instagram at Five Artists One Love. Look at you. Well done. <laughs> How dare you not plug in the Instagram? Uh, I, you must. I. Yeah, to be honest, I only have it for Five Artists One Love. It's not my personal account, so I can. <laughs> and oh, it's the stop. number. There's a bunch of bikinis. The number shots. five no, no. artists. I was young. The number I needed one the money. Love. <laughs> I right. did what I had to do. <laughs> Thank you guys. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. We'll see you again much. very soon. Absolutely. Yes, so respect. Thank you. That was awesome. Sweet. My ass is sore. Yeah, but we're talking yeah. about art. How can you not have fun? I know, right? Dude, man, we can talk for like seven My days. last guy was just got out of prison yeah. <laughs> a, a week prior and told me about the Con Air story of him like chaining him up and making stops in different cities, pick up more prisoners. Why was he on the show? What was it? What was the topic? Because he's a friend of mine, just got out of prison.